Hello, damn, did I forget to unmute my, uh, oh shit, sorry. My desktop so you could hear the intro music, that's kind of sad. Oh, at least I remembered to put the fucking text. Uh, so at least you had something to look at, I guess. Even if it is very little. Alright. We are back. Welcome back, everybody. Shit. Fuck. Sorry. Hmm. Tickles chin. Shit, what the fuck? Hold on. Well, anyway, um, so yeah, welcome back, I'm back, and so are you, you see, okay, so, you've caught me with my pants down, as they say, uh, I'm working, uh, I was working before I started on trying to, uh, figure out what I'm gonna do for the sort of texturing Texture painting, shading, whatever the fuck I decide to do. Um. Hold on. Do I hear? No, oh, never mind. I still don't know what I'm doing, okay? Straight up. Can this motherfucker get out of here? Anyway. Okay. So. I don't know if I mentioned this already. Probably I did. Uh, I always end up just forgetting. Um, what we are going for is sort of, kind of like a medieval style painting. Okay. The problem is, uh, I don't really know how to how to go about this. If I'm being very honest with you. I don't know. Uh, as you can see, what I'm working on right now. God, it looks awful. Oh, from far away, you can really see the red dots. I wonder why that's... Ugh. You see that? Is that like... Is that like a rendering thing? Or like, what's going on? Why does it look like that? Anyway, that's, that doesn't matter. Um... So yeah, so one thing that I did um, is I looked up a video that dealt with some paintings. I found yeah, some, um, and they basically just, this one offered me, or sort of gave me, um, where the fuck am I looking at? Oh, there it is. This one gave me... Wait, why isn't it working now? What? Am I, like, painting the right thing? Oh, I'm pressing darker, too. That's why. Fuck's sake. Anyway. This one video suggested... Uh, I use... Um... These sort of, like, pink brushes... Uh, these are the free ones. There are other ones, but you need to pay money for them. Um, and these are the brushes they use to kind of, like, give off that sort of old-timey um, look, I guess. Uh, you can see what I've been using it for. Uh, here, I tried using the dots to sort of, like... I don't really know. Wait, what the fuck just happened? Something just happened. Um, so yeah, I was just testing out these brushes. Looking in, like, what way can I use these? 
Oh, they kind of like blur into each other. It's kind of it's kind of cool actually. Oh, not really there, but you know. Oh, airbrush is quite nice. So yeah, anyway, I tried to... I'm, I'm trying to think of a way to sort of, like I said, replicate um, that sort of medieval old painty, old paint, old old paint, old paint painting type sort of look and um i'm kind of having trouble with it i'm not exactly sure how to how to do it or how to go about it if i'm being quite honest oh That's interesting. Sorry, <laughs> I got distracted. So yeah, I still don't know what I'm going to do. I try to look for a shader because a shader would make this like 10 times easier. But... I don't know why it looks like this. Anyway. So yeah, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what to do um, to sort of capture that look. I thought maybe these paints might be able to help me, but they kind of just, I don't know. Texture painting requires me to do kind of art in the more 2D sense, which I've never been really good at. I didn't start Blender to do 2D art, but here I am. Having to do 2D art. <laughs> so what can you do? Hmm. So yeah, I'm kind of thinking about certain strategies, and by me, when I say thinking, I mean I haven't really been, haven't really thought of anything. Oh my god. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of the marker. This is quite nice, though. And so is this. Well, actually, mm -hmm. Which one's the other one I liked? This one? Uh, no. Oh, I think it was this one. So yeah, uh, I kind of want to follow, I was following a little bit, What the reason why I was doing the dots was because I was try kind of trying to follow the image, and to me, this looks like it has like a pink base, which it does, um, I probably don't need a texture image for just like a simple pink base, but 
I was testing things out as a pink base and what I was doing is I was sort of like using the dot brush to sort of I, wa I wanted to sprinkle on a bunch of different colors um, however that didn't turn out to look so good and as you could as, as you saw before I decided to ruin that image Uh, cause I couldn't get the right color thingy, color math node to sort of work the way I wanted it to. Hold on. Damn. I could have had it. Never mind. How annoying. Damn, I cried. Sorry. <laughs> that sounds funny. Anyway, um, so yeah. That was sort of my idea. I have a pink base. Uh, and then using color math and using some other nodes, I could sort of layer uh, detail on top of the sort of pink base. But um, that wasn't really looking as good as I would wanted. I would have wanted it to. I might start over. I think um, I might have started off on the wrong foot here. Okay, yeah. So white's the basic color. All right. Brand spanking new. Hold on. Okay. So if I were to eat black, it would come off of black. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I don't know why I expected. Uh, however, if I would use like a grayish. Like a point five, maybe. Then it would just come off as a darker red or a darker pink. All right, and I could do something with that. Like if I were to go back and try to use this again. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's get rid of this. Let's save. Let's go back to the dipping dots. The dots have to be quite small. Like, the brush has to be quite small for it to work. Otherwise, as you saw before, uh, it didn't work as well as I would have liked. I want to see how that looks. Wait, wait, hold on. What happens if I... After that blurring... Oh. And it gives, like, a... Like a messy, um... 
freckle sort of look. Hold on. Right. I don't know if that's good or not. Wait, okay, let me remove this. Let's start over again. Is that too dark? I wonder if I can make it lighter. Uh, I mean, that doesn't really make it lighter. Oh, you know what? I can make it kind of like the color. Hold on. Oh, shit. I don't have the color on here. I think I, I should be able to just straight up rip it. Here, if I do that, there shouldn't be any dots on there. Okay, there, there are dots on there. Although, actually, hmm. All right, it's a bit too red. Let's go a little bit, uh, I don't know, blue. What happens if I go blue? Whoops. All right, they look blue. I don't know what I expected. It looks very red. Wait, hold on. Let me try something else. All right, that's a little lighter. Okay, what happens if I blur this now? Or soften it? It lags quite a bit. Touch it all if it's doing anything. If I'm being quite honest. I could increase the strength. But again, I can't really see the difference. And I don't know if uh, blurring it is the right way to go. I'm kind of just testing things out, like I said. Okay, it seems like increasing the strength isn't actually doing anything. How about smear? Uh, okay, it doesn't really add anything. I 
doesn't even look cool. Eh? Hold on. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I'm probably gonna have to look at some videos to see. I was looking at the the video that sort of gave me these brushes, but I didn't actually watch it all the way. I only watched how to install it. I guess it wouldn't be such a bad idea to watch it. Hmm. Okay, fine with this method. Method. Is that if I go this method, then that means I have to texture paint every single um, other thing individually. I don't know how tangled to me that is. Um, I feel like if I could find a sort of shader um, to sort of give me like a head start, that would work a lot better for me. But you know, what are you going to do? I couldn't really find any sort of shaders or anything like that dealing with them. Um, Uh, sort of like an old painting look. But yeah. Hmm. I really want to learn how to do this though. Um, however, I don't want to watch. It's like the beginning of the stream. I don't want to like sit here and watch videos like right in the beginning. Apart from the uh, pendulum, um, and the texture painting that I'm doing for it right now, uh, I don't really have much else to do. I mean, obviously, I could work on making sort of finished meshes for the other animals and I I could uh texture paint them as well. And that probably will be on the docket, but at the moment uh I obviously need to focus on doing texture painting first and then Yeah. I could go ahead and do the other part. Uh the other ones I mean. Um, so I'm like, I'm trying to look at these paintings, these medieval paintings, see like what makes them look the way they do. Okay. The colors look very like, they're not like flat. There's like seepage of the sort of background of the, um, the thing they're painting on. Uh, I don't think there's a br I don't have a I have a brush like that. Like I mean that's pretty extreme. I don't really need that. Uh, oh, that's the same one. Maybe this strips a little, but the fact that this strips means that it can only go, like, one way. It's kind of a little bit difficult to work with. What? Difficult to work with. Uh, and then the airbrush, you know, just an airbrush. That's what makes it hard. I don't exactly know how to go about this. Hold on. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. 
pam 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 Hold on, let me check something real quick. Wait, never mind. Oof. So yeah. Hold on. Let me let me reset this back to what it was. So yeah. Sadly, uh I think we're gonna have to uh, watch some videos uh, that go over this sort of painting method so that I can actually learn. Oh, I guess I forgot to talk about a few things. Did I do any? I think I did, right? A recap. Did I do a recap? I don't remember. Sorry. Uh, I uploaded a few of my weapons and the low poly alligator into the GitHub repository, and uh, one of the programmers uh, put it in the game. It was really nice. Um, obviously, those are not done. They're very shoddy, and they're not textured, and they're not rigged, of course. Um, it was interesting to see them just hop around in this sort of thing that we had. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I mentioned that or not. I was wondering where this fucking shit was. Hey. Alright. Hmm. Anyway, so I have a, f a few that I want to watch. Um, there is the one that I got the brushes from, which I think is just good to watch in general since that's where I got the brushes from. He's probably going to go over a way to use them to make it look nice. Um, I only have the free pack that comes with like six brushes, so I don't have all the brushes that he will probably end up showing off or using. Um, Hmm, um, what was I gonna say? So, yeah. And then there is another video that I have, uh, where a guy is doing a, I think this is a time lapse. I don't know if he's gonna do any commentary on it. I haven't heard it yet, but he basically just paints a, a watermelon. And I wanna see if he goes into how he does it. Hold on. There's a video here that goes over. I wonder if this is a shader or if it's a texture. We go wrap. Three basic steps. Demo. How does this work? How normals work? Base colors. I must watch this one too. This one's only eight minutes long. But yeah. Oh, let me check something out. 
I was wondering to ask that question. Oh, mom. Check this out. This guy suggests using a noise texture to make the color intensity uneven dust texture to show that there were actually particles in the real world stuck onto the canvas. Canvas texture to show that there was something else back there and no simple paint material. If the paint is rather old, then you might even even some paint cracks here and there. The colors might have been damaged as well. Keep in mind, because of all these paintings, we see extremely large interventions. They are very fragile, which is impossible to scan, but it's easily fairly to photograph them, which means they might be able to show the afterlife. Blah, blah, blah. Warning though, do not try to do all of those well at once because the result will be ugly. You have to do hundreds of small adjustments here and there to become, become balanced. Okay. Let's play around with some things. That does mean I will have to shrink the uh, blender, which will make it look weird in the uh, on your screen. Sorry about that. Not much I could do about it. Um, what am I looking at? Okay, so he says a noise. Texture. Oh. I'm just going to delete this because I don't know how, how much we'll need it. And I'm asking you to hold me. The fuck am I looking at? Fine. All right, let's look. Four D chest.
<laughs> hmm. How does a noise texture work? Oh, you know what? I could probably plug this to a factor node, can I? <laughs> Sorry. That was really loud. God damn it. I was laughing. Uh, how does that look? Ooh, what's going on? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> what does darker look like again? I'm so sorry, I forgot. Oh, it's just what? Huh? Oh. Why are they... What? Fuck. I accidentally pressed S and I fucking copied the white. God damn it. Okay, wait, hold on. I wanna try with this. Wait, this is the tail run. Alright. So, I don't know what the noise texture does. Uh, I assume it's going to sort of play around a little bit with the... with the way the, the sort of dots look like. Because you can see it kind of already looks a little bit weird there. I think. Uh, I don't know if that's actually doing anything or not. I've never... Uh, maybe I need to look more into the texture painting. I did say I was going to do this... Um, when I was making the heads, but I kind of figured out, or at least I, I copied a way that someone else was doing it. Um, but I, I'm still a little lost in how exactly every single sort of node in texture painting works. Um, I'm just dumb. I really can't really explain it any other way. Okay, I'm gonna finish painting the entire body in this like weird pink or I guess weird white um, and then I'm gonna play around with the nose texture um, node a little bit to see what I can come up with what can I find myself into <laughs> oh my god what the fuck's going on all right so if I take a step back all right my little boy we have a five um, it does something, but inside of the dots specifically, um, is that how it works? I have to, don't click it too. Yeah, it doesn't actually do anything, it looks like. Oh, that's like a skull. It's a skull right there. Okay, point 0.5. Uh, I don't really see a difference. I, I do see a difference, it's just... Okay, zero distortion. Wait, is it zero? Yeah, it is. So it's only in the 
white spots that there's actually some sort of weirdness to it. Kind of looks a little bit like fur. Like that. Kind of looks a little bit like fur. Oops. Okay. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, the other thing he suggested was a dust texture. Um, so let's let's look at that, shall we? There is no dust texture. Is it only in cycles? No, there is no dust texture. I don't know where he got dust from. I don't know. So let's not worry about that. This, this was from 2014. So. <laughs> uh, and then the canvas texture to show that there was something else back there. There is no canvas texture. Hmm. I... I mean, this was a long time ago, so I'm not gonna probably got deleted or probably got changed into something else, and I just don't know what it, it was changed into. Um, let's see what else. Okay, that's about it. Let's <laughs> check Vervel or what is that? Check Vervel. Is it Vervel or is that an exclamation mark? I can't see. It's just for okay. That does not exist. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that was a bit of a botch. Um, but whatever. It doesn't look like oil painting or like it looks very flat. I don't know how to explain it too much. All right, whatever. That doesn't work out. Let's start looking at some videos then. So, ranking them from longest to shortest. The time lapse for the um, painting a watermelon is about 23 minutes. Um, this one is 8 minutes. Uh, and then the one with the paints brushes that I got it from is about 18 minutes. Uh, I also found, I think this was the video that I saw before. But this is the... Blender 4.0, what's new, and why you should be excited video. Um, I mentioned it before that I like, hey, you know, I should probably watch this um, since, you know, I do use Blender. <laughs> but um, I'll watch that maybe later. I don't know. So let's start off with the 8-minute video first. Um, I think this is a shader, question mark, so it might actually be useful. Let me Let me see if I can get it up on screen.
sorry. I was scratching my leg. And also, I'm like... Oh god, why am I like... So gross. Anyway. Whatever. Alright. Can you see it? Let's watch it. This is by Cody Guinea. G Gin Gin D. Um, I think this will it require normals. Uh, normal editing, which I don't know how I feel about. Anyway, let's just watch it. It's eight minutes long. We'll see. In today's video, I'll show you how to create this painterly 3D effect. I did it by painting over an object space normal map, which is not as scary as it sounds. This technique allows us to capture the feeling of a 2D painting while maintaining the flexibility of 3D. Also, compared to other methods, it's not that hard. To start, here are my top five favorite things about this technique. Number one, the brush strokes react to the lighting. The vibe of this scene is definitely morning tea, but if we wanted to make it midnight tea, we can just move the lights around, change the colors, and the image still feels painterly. If we want to add a little more mystery, maybe some intrigue, we can do that too. Bruh. Or maybe we want things to feel more eerie and otherworldly. You definitely have to light with the brush strokes in mind, but in general, this tea kettle looks pretty good in any lighting setup. Number two, you can move the camera. It's easy to add cinematic camera moves, just like you would in a more traditional 3D scene. You can also change the focal length, which is helpful for making things look flatter or just weirder. Number three, it's artist friendly. Similar techniques require dozens, even hundreds of nodes. For reference, what? this is the <laughs> node tree for our kettle. It's super manageable because most of the effect comes from painting image textures, and painting image textures is a lot more intuitive for artists who have limited programming skills. Number four, it works with metallic and glossy materials. Because we're using Blender's default principled BSDF node, we can make our brush strokes look metallic, rough, or glossy. There are also a lot of other inputs we can experiment with to get unique effects. Number five, we have a ton of creative control over the brush strokes. Since we have the option of hand painting our brush strokes, there's an opportunity to create looks that are unique to our scene and authentic to our style. A lot of other techniques just add brush strokes to surfaces randomly. They treat the brush strokes more like noise. And to be clear, there are a lot of times when automating your textures is a great option. But it's important to keep in mind that brush strokes can actually do things. They can contribute to the mood, the composition, and the story. Real quick, this is my first full video on this channel, so you'd be helping me out a lot if you liked, subscribed, and left me a little comment. Anyway, here's what you probably should know Ow. before you try this technique. Number one, the basics of a 3D program. Damn. I use Blender, but Maya, Cinema 4D, Unreal, they should all work fine. Number two, UV unwrapping. This is just because we're working with textures, but you don't even have to really be good at it to get started. Just the basics. Number three, normal maps. I'll explain these later in the video, but in short, right. we're taking a normal map that looks like this and making it look like this. So it helps to at least know a little bit about how normal maps work. All right, so there are three basic steps. First, you bake an object space normal map. Then you paint over it with brush strokes. And finally, you take your painted normal map and you plug it into your shader. What's great is that you can build off of these steps and construct a variation that works for you. So we start with our completed UV unwrapped 3D model. To bake an object space normal map in Blender, we'll start in the shader workspace where we'll add an image texture node. From there, we'll- All right, I'll follow along. add a new image. You can name it whatever you want, and you can make it whatever size you want. Next, under render... Squid square, well. Alright, this is gonna be... Normal test. Properties, we'll make sure our render engine is set to cycles. Then, a bit further down in render properties, we'll open up the bake section. Let's change the bake type to normal and the space to object. Make sure your model and image texture are both selected, then click bake. From the image editor, we can then save it. All right, hold on. Uh, I think I usually 
decrease the amount of samples because otherwise it just takes too long. Hold on, I have a a Google Doc that sort of tells me where what I what I need to do basically. Or baking. Did it work? <laughs> What's up there? What? Oh, I could pull it up right here. So you could see how it looks once it's done. Hopefully it looks the same as how he showed it. Otherwise, I've done something terribly wrong. Mm. Hey, it worked. Look at that. That looks cool as fuck. Alright, let's just continue the video. I don't know if you guys can see that. I forgot the video's in the way. Not be. Don't worry about that. Image texture are both selected, then click Bake. From the image editor, we can then save it onto our computer. Once that's done, we'll open the normal map in our painting software. We want to cover our. Oh no, they want me to use a painting software. I don't have a fucking painting software. Our normal map with brush strokes. But we need to make sure that the colors of the brush strokes match the colors of the normal map underneath. The most straightforward way is to color pick. Then place a brush stroke in the same area that you picked the color from. Then repeat. The software is up to you. Substance Painter, Photoshop, Procreate, completely depends on what you're comfortable with. I made this little brush stroke generator in Substance Designer, which is a fun way to automate things. You could also use some what? sort of filter, like this one from Tradigital. 
As a last step, we bring it on back to whatever software we started with and we plug it in. Here's the shader setup in Blender. It's important that the color space on our painterly normal map is set to non-color and that the normal map node is set to object space. I think of this whole process as just a weird way of sculpting. If I sculpt a bunch of fat I think I've seen this before. Hold on. I mean what is it principled? PSDF. Get a normal map. Is it was an object space you said? Yeah. Object space. I would go in there. I just want to see how this looks without like any sort of texturing. Let me go back to um EV. Wow, it's very shiny in some places. I wonder if that's due to the principal BSDF. Oh, it's hundred percent <laughs> due to it. Never mind. <laughs> I think it's actually good that I removed that since I don't think they're that shiny, the paintings, old paintings. All right. Now, the problem is that I will have to texture paint this. Um, now, I wonder if one of these brushes can help me out <laughs> with what I'm looking for. That one's... Oh, that one actually may, might not be that bad, actually. I kind of... I mean, it's square, which is kind of what I'm looking for. Let me give it a try. Nothing hurts from trying. The one thing I can do is not rotate it. Oh, I can. Never mind. I don't actually know what the difference is. Hold on. Assets into the base of our kettle. The result has a lot of similarities to our painterly effect. When we shine a light on it, we get these big blocks of uniform color, which is exactly how we want our brush strokes to behave. And if I move the light, the big blocks of color react accordingly. Of course, we have some problems. With the sculpting method, we tend to get this pattern of connected cells. It's kind of like a Voronoi pattern, but we want our brush strokes to overlap. We also get pretty orderly edges, but we want the option to make our edges complex and organic. So the facets give us the general behavior we want, but they still don't look like brush strokes. That's where normal maps come in. By painting our normal map, we're making our object look like it's covered in facets. And crucially, those facets are shaped like brush strokes. So each brush stroke is being rendered as if it's a flat surface, which is why, for the most part, each one ends up as a solid color. It helps a lot to understand how normals work. So in 3D, normals tell us which way a surface is facing. To show oh, this, yeah. let's assign each direction a color. We've got the magenta direction, the pale blue direction, the cyan direction, you get the idea. And we've got this cube in the center, so let's color the faces of the cube based on which direction they're facing. We just created an object space normal map. Here it is flattened out. Of course, surfaces can face more than six directions, so let's bevel this cube. You'll see we unlock a bunch more colors. If we round our bevel, you'll see we get a gradient in our normal map. As the surface gradually changes direction, so do the colors. This is the main takeaway. In an object space normal map, a gradual shift in color represents a rounded or curved surface. 
while solid stretches of color represent flat surfaces. So let's sample the color from our gradient here. Then let's paint over this rounded bevel with a solid color. You'll see that when we render it, Blender treats the area I painted over as if it's a flat surface, even though if we look at the silhouette, it's very clearly not. Adding a base color with brush strokes creates some additional color variation. Also, sometimes your 3D model needs to be more than one color. Ideally, the brush strokes in the base color are the exact same shape and positions as the ones in the normal map. That way, everything's lined up. Otherwise, it can feel sort of discordant. So figuring out how to do this is kind of tricky. I like to use Substance Painter, where you can paint two separate channels with two separate colors at the same time. I just set up color jitter for the base color brush strokes, then focus on the normal map. If you're using a 2D painting software, you can try painting your brush strokes on several separate layers, then use clipping masks to change the colors. I would love to work out a better method for this, so let me know if you come up with something. So a couple of things about conversions and compatibility. If you want to use this on a moving character, you may need to convert your map from object space to tangent space. You would do this after you did your brush strokes. I still haven't tested this effect on an animated character, so I have mm -hmm. no idea if it looks good. Also, different programs use different kinds of normal maps. So depending on your workflow, you may need to convert them by flipping the green channel. All right, that's all I got for now. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe here on YouTube, and you can also find me on... All right. Oof. The only issue I had with that was the fact that you have to... It, it was the same with the... Um... Actually, yeah. It was the same with the sort of shadow and... Shadow color and normal color of the sort of shell cell shaded... And that's, is it shell shaded? I don't remember. I think it's like, uh, I don't know. Anyway, it was the same thing that I had to do for a different other style, uh, which meant that you have to uh, color in the exact same spot, the exact same color. Obviously, one being shadow and the other one being a base. Um, and that's easier to do in a uh, painting software like Photoshop. Is it Photoshop? Yeah. And uh, Inkscape, even though I haven't used Inkscape that much, I don't really know how to do it. So yeah, that's my only issue with this. Alright, let's look at some other things. So yeah, uh, let's look at this one. This is him uploading it so I'm just gonna skip forward uh, so that he can get into the painting aspect of it if you don't want to go through this every time before we get into the real project let me to demonstrate how those brushes behaves this one was a dual texture brush I usually use as a pastel color difference of dual texture brushes with regular brushes is straightforward they got these kinds of bezel look i will talk about the brushes in more details in no time so let's just focus on what to expect from those brushes this brush is called big grunge And this is the pencil color, nice to use for illustrative liners. We even got a watercolor brush here. This one is interesting and shows some slight deviation from the color we select. This is a procedural texture brush. This one is the straight brush. This is the rake brush and this is the trick. If you switch to smear tool, you will find two more brushes. I use them to emulate traditional look. Pretty interesting, right? Well, let's look into them with greater details. While I recreate this painting by Loika super quickly. Hold on. Smear. Okay. Never mind. I thought I had the smear brushes that he mentioned, but I don't. Alright, let's continue. 
I actually skipped many things of the original scene, just made some rocks quickly and the doom. It is okay as long as I can talk about some brush works in 3D. All the models are pretty simple and so I will use automatic UV mapping for this project. Also from time to time I will speed up by 3 to 5 times so that I can publish this by tomorrow before the year ends. Damn. I am done with the UV mapping as soon as I land it in the edit tab. <laughs> Let me assign some materials to them. The rocks are sharing a single texture map and a single material. The dune gets its personal texture map. You can create textures inside texture paint mode this way. This adds a texture slot in shader editor automatically. I switched to paint mode for reference inside image editor. Also, I split the image editor and unpinned this one. So that it gets switched automatically when I switch between my meshes. I changed the viewport shading to flat. Lightings are gone now. And set color to texture. I also have cavity selected. And I am back to normal speed again. So sorry for scanning with my insane speeding. Here we go. Let's scan into painting right away. Not sure why I dare to say painting because I don't actually paint. I am not good at it. I just recreate paintings while depending on my texturing and observational skills. Yeah, it is you regular copycat stuff. And wow, I am not even ashamed. Let me show you how I shamelessly copy this dangerously beautiful scene in 3D. I don't know, the colors like I use as in their painting is too dangerous for my heart. I love those. Trust me, I am morally high when I compare myself with those AI thingies. They pretend they don't even know whose paintings they snatched randomly. On the other side, this innocent guy innocently remakes 3D versions of his favorite paintings pretty harmless hobby right i just tried to mask out the cavities since i prefer it over viewport cavities from the overlay setting i switched to the dark mode since people hate light mode no idea why light mode is actually pretty good for eyes since the white don't bleed into the black to sample a color you can hit mm. as and hover around to target a certain color and release to pick one. <coughs> I'm going to copy the hex code for background. This selected the cavity since I won't need it while painting. I will uncheck the outlines as well. These things are almost like a ritual. They help me to get into the mood of painting somehow. So it might not work for you. I will start texturing my scene now. I started with painting over the sharp edges of the dune. I want to give it such a look as if it is isolated in the space. You probably get the idea already. So this is what the pastel color brush do. It got high visual effect. Hmm. I usually use pressure sensitivity for brush size and strength, but I often turn them off since sometimes my viewport lags a lot, probably because of my hardware. I call this brush blocky chalky. It is more denser than the previous, but it got subtle visual effect as well. I like to use it with lower opacity and add details with it. But I often use this for blocking out colors too. And here is the big grunge. I like this one too. If I make strokes with subtle pressure, it mm -hmm. will keep this sort of details. Pretty useful. In fact, these are my primary texture brushes. I think you actually don't need a huge set of texture brushes. I also like to turn off the pressure sensitivity for brush opacity from time to time. And with decreased opacity, the brush will deliver interesting details by layering strokes over one another i'm done <laughs>
I'm not I'm not very artsy fartsy if I'm being quite honest. Uh but he does make some beautiful work at the end. I don't know if you see how nice it is. Um ooh, bloody lovely. Um the question is, can I do that? Probably not. <laughs> okay, let's look at the other one. Got watermelon. Let's skip the intro. It's by the same guy. I think it is. Thank you, Charles. This is great show. It is. Actually, it is a three D painting. It is very favorite of mine. It is a year ago, so it's so, a little bit early. Let us start it. Unfortunately, I have fallen. Okay, I'm gonna skip him. You be unwrapping the shiz and go straight into when he starts texture painting it. You can select multiple objects and enter a rhythm at the same time to play out the rearing of the lines in the line. So I blocked out the line in the corner. I just centered the sky from. Ooh, fuck me. What the fuck? So for today's session, by practicing some brush work in Blender, I am not concerned at all about composition or stuff like colors, etc. Like, I don't, I, my only issue with doing it by hand is, I'm not sure, I mean, he is sort of like copying a little bit, or like blowing off the reference. I don't have a reference, and I'm not very good at shading yet. Um, so I don't know how to go about this. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I'm just stretching. Hmm. I think I might need more water. Anyway. <laughs> Like they're already pretty flat colors. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I guess here he is in a flat color. Where is that? Oh, I see. Maybe that's what I need to do. Like just like pick one of these colors and. Color it all one solid color.
fancy feast? More like fancy feet. Huh? Huh? Fuck. What?
I don't know how this is gonna look. I'm just kind of free balling it. I'm gonna be on, but yeah. I wanna see what happens if I put a image now. <laughs> Let's use dark, darker too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Wi-Fi.
I don't know how I feel about this. It kind of looks like I'm just doing stripes. I don't know how I feel about this. It seems very messy. Hmm, now I'm looking at, sorry. Maybe I should get more colors. <laughs>
I know how I feel about this. <laughs> Seems really silly. Isn't exactly what I was looking for. I'm sure if I were to add a lot more detail, um, then maybe it wouldn't look as silly, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Let's see what else we can find. Alright, hold on. I'll bring it back. Oh shit, you can only see... Fuck, I forgot to take it off. I'm so sorry. You can see what I'm working on. Sorry about that. Actually, when I come back, let's watch that video. Why not? Take a break. All right, I'll be right back.
Alright, I'm back. Sorry. Sorry that it took so long. Um, I went to the bathroom, and then I was like, I said I need water, so I'm gonna go get water. Um, and so I went to go get water, and then I was like, yesterday, I said, today I will change the filter uh, to the sort of like water thing that we have. We have a little water jug that has a little filter in it or whatever. I don't know if it works. I just drink from it. The water started tasting bad, so I was like, I'm gonna change the filter. So I started doing that. Um, but then the water started leaking out really slowly. Um, so I was doing all that, cleaning it and whatever. And because it was so slow, uh, I just left that as is and I just grabbed some like water bottles. Um, hold on, let me open this up. All right, so we're back. Uh, like I said before I left, uh, let's quickly just watch this. Um, 4.0, what's new and why you should be excited. There's a video underneath it that says playing for water features in less than five minutes. I might also watch that. I don't think that'd be that bad of an idea. It's only five minutes. And this one's only, oh, it's like 13 minutes. So let's watch this as a sort of way to distract me from what I was working on. Because the way I was doing it, and just like overall, what the hell I was doing, uh, I, I wasn't the biggest fan of. I'm not exactly sure still how I'm going to paint it, but um, I have to figure it out. So yeah. So let me... Okay, let me, let me put that back on screen. And we can watch it together. Because uh, I did mention this earlier. Not earlier, but a few days ago, maybe. Uh, 4.0. I want to see what's up, basically. Let me take a drink. I got a seltzer, so I might mute myself. Because these shits make me burp. And I don't want you guys to hear that. Shit gross. Alright. Let's get started, then. Blender 4.0 by Decoded. What's new and why you should be excited? The last Blender release of the year is about to drop in about a week and this time it's 4.0 which means it's a big one. Mm -hmm. The Blender team have really outdone themselves with a lot of cool new toys for us to play with. <laughs> but I thought today I would go through four or five of my favorite new features coming to Blender in the next few weeks. Okay, so let's just get this first one out of the way. Probably the biggest feature that's coming to Blender 4.0 is light linking. It's probably the most requested feature in Blender's history, and for good reason, because it is actually very important. If you've been living in a cave or you're new to Blender, you might not know what light linking is. Essentially, it's the idea that you can control the influence of each light source in the scene, so you can say, this light doesn't affect this object, or this light doesn't Ooh. cause this object to cast a shadow. I want. If this light doesn't affect this object. So certain lights affect affect certain objects. I'm trying to think how how I could use that. I'm like thinking of different things. You know. All right. Let's continue. Sorry. <laughs> Now, I did make a video briefly a few months ago when light linking was first kind of introduced, but let's just go over exactly how it works. Oh, okay, sorry. So this is really easy to set up. All you have to do is select the light source that you want to make the changes on. And if you go to the object panel and then shading and open up light linking, what you can do is you can select a collection from your collection menu, or you can just drag and drop uh, into a new collection. So I can say, the cube, the plane, and the Suzanne, and add all of these into here. Then let's say we'll put this blue light here. Let's say I don't want this blue light to shine onto the side of the monkey head. All I have to do is turn this light off for Suzanne, and she loses the blue light. Mm -hmm. or if I don't want the light to shine on this plane here, let me turn that off. If you want to learn how to edit really well Bruh. from professional Hollywood editors, we're going to show you the stuff that nobody else is teaching. And I can turn it off. Oh, wait, hold on. Now, what you'll notice is that this does only affect direct light. So if I turn this off for the plane, for instance, 
it'll lose most of the light but it still has some blue light over here and the reason for that is because that is light which has been reflected off the side of this cube and then it's bouncing down there's no direct light but there is indirect light and you can do the same thing for shadows too if i just go down to shadow linking and i can just add the collection i've just made let's say we want to um exclude the plane then the plane will now get no shadows or cube same thing it is not casting a shadow people who use other software like maya 3d studio max and cinema 4d often cite light linking as one of the reasons why they won't move to blender so now that blender has it i am going to be curious to see how many of those people were actually just talking shit and how many of them will now move over to blender this next feature is really exciting because it should make your renders look more realistic without you having to do any Sorry, I was, work. I was now, okay, not gonna say. It is really complex, far too complex for this video. So I'm going to give you a very brief explanation of the problem. So essentially, uh, Blender is capable of producing a massive amount of colors and it does it in a linear scale. That's not how our eyes work and it's certainly not how a computer monitor works. So it needs to get all of these colors and adapt them to about 16.7 million colors that's used on a typical monitor with sRGB. The problem is that it tends to look really bad. So I have this old scene of mine here and I've set the color management view transform to raw. This is essentially just no changes being made to the colors. We're getting what blenders created and we're trying to map them onto 256 levels of red, green and blue. And obviously it looks terrible it's way too contrasty and we have no values hardly in the middle range which is what the human eye is accustomed to seeing so originally we had this view transform which was called standard which was obviously better than what we had before but it still had a pretty low dynamic range you can see here that the white values are like really clipped and the same on this sign here and the black values as well are just way too dark so a few years ago we got Filmic, which was definitely an improvement. If we switch to Filmic, you can see that we now have uh, more colors in the mid ranges and these whites now here are no longer blown out and the darks look a little bit better too with a bit more detail. So the new version is called AGX and the big improvement here is how it handles saturated light colors. You can see here that this sign in real life probably wouldn't be uh, this color orange if you have a light typically it starts to shift in hue as it gets lighter and obviously it starts to look more and more white the same over here we have a light and it looks kind of blue but lights should be pretty much white in the middle in fact the reflection of this light is actually lighter than the light itself so if we change this over to AGX you can see that now we have much more realistic lights where the light and the light reflection is more similar in color and now we have less saturation over here as well now this is a breaking change meaning that agx is now the default for color management so if you're messing around with some old scenes or you've been working on a project and you're making new scenes but in 4.0 you might want to switch over to filmic if that's what you've been using but going forward, I would suggest you use AGX because once you tweak the look with some contrast and things, you're going to get it looking much better. Here's a really good comparison from the Blender Open movie from last year showing how it looked before and how things look oh, now. Does I look think better. everyone will agree, it definitely looks much better now. <laughs> so we've also had a big upgrade to the way that objects are transformed and laid out in the scene. Now we've always had the snapping option before and you can snap on increment which will move on increments on the grid or what I usually have this set to is vertex which will try and snap one vertex to the other the problem is blender doesn't know which vertex you want to snap to where so you can see if we put it on this side it snaps to the right of the box and if we put it on this side it tries to put the smaller box inside the bigger one and we can't move it up or down what I tend to do is use uh, press G and then just hold down control and you can easily just enable and disable snapping. You still kind of have this problem if you're trying to line things up where you have to move around the viewport and do all sorts of stuff just to get things in the right place. But now all you have to do is press G and then if you hit B, 
you can select which point you want to snap from. I'm going to say this one, and then you can snap wherever you want. Left click. Uh -huh, okay. This is a life changer. I've been using this for the last couple of weeks, and honestly, it's absolutely great. Another <laughs> excellent transform feature while I'm on the topic. Uh, if you wanted to move something around before, you couldn't grab something and then move around the scene, right? If I grab this and then I hold shift and I try to pan, it tries to do all this weird stuff. Now that was a real pain if you were trying to say, I don't know, if you had like a, a long shelf and you were trying to move a box along a shelf, you would have to like keep sliding along and moving or you would have to zoom all the way out and then zoom back in. Now, you can just press G, hold down Alt, and then if we press Shift, we can just move around wherever we want. Genius. Those Blender guys are geniuses. <laughs> the next feature, which totally caught me off guard, is called Node Tools. It's essentially a way that you can make your own operators in Blender. So if you don't have any experience with uh, Python programming, for example, you know a little bit about geometry nodes, you can now essentially make your own tools in Blender that you can apply in edit mode. So let me give you an example. I'm just going to add a cube to the scene here. I'm just mm -hmm. going to make the most basic of tools. I'm going to go into the geometry node setup. But we don't need an actual geometry node modifier on here. To go to modifier, we can now create a tool. Let's make a new tool. And I'm going to search for... Um, transform geometry and then I'm going to rotate it 20 degrees and I'm going to scale it up by 1.2 so let's say for whatever reason why you're modeling that's something that you find yourself continually doing and we're going to call this um, call this tool one now if we're in layout mode and we're, in, we're going to edit mode we can just search for tool one and every time oh. we run that tool, which we can just Interesting. keep doing shift and R, it'll repeat the action. I think that's pretty cool. It'll get larger and it'll rotate every time. Now, this is obviously a very basic example, but you can do anything that you can do in geometry nodes like this. So instead of continually having to like apply geometry nodes and then go back into edit mode, it's something that you can just have on the fly. And I've seen some examples already of people doing some very impressive stuff with this. Now, one of the really cool things about this is the fact that you can actually expose values as well with a little pop-up. So let's say, for example, we want to be able to control the amount of rotation. We could get a combine XYZ node, plug this into rotation, and then just grab this, and plug that into the Z. Now, if we run our tool, we'll have a pop-up here where we can actually control the rotation here as well. Once again, this is a very simple example. Rotation. You can do anything you want with it, essentially. Cole, he's my miracle child. Uh, so how does uh, your miracle same. child get cancer? Finally, you're going to notice some changes to the principal shader. For a start, it's much yes. more compact, yeah. <laughs> and everything is pushed into these uh, different headings, which I'm not sure about yet, especially the order of them. It's probably just because it's breaking muscle memory, but it can do some really cool things now. Like, for instance, we've always had the sheen value, which is supposed to uh, kind of look like microfibers on a surface. Like if you're making cloth, for example, and you want to replicate the tiny little bits of fluff on the cloth. It didn't really work very well before, but now we have a new system for it, which actually works really, really well. Uh, one of the cool things about this now is it does a really good job of replicating dust so if you get a noise texture for this, you can plug this into the weight of the sheen and then maybe put this through color ramp just to play with this a little bit see that it gives us this really nice sort of dusty effect very very easily oh so it's very customizable and you can do all sorts of stuff with it if you open up some of these isn't that kind of what i'm looking for <laughs> the settings you can see that we now have a new clear coat system as well i believe which seems to be much more accurate and there's just lots of changes in general to how things are calculated to make them more physically accurate all on the road to improving the principal shader which is something that's been in the works for a while
since we're talking about changes to the user interface there has been a little bit of an overhaul in general and it is worth mentioning something else which i'm not too keen on if you add a modifier now it splits everything into these little drop downs oh. it's extra like sort of button tweaks i don't i don't like that either <laughs> i like how it showed it all i don't know why they made it into like a small ass menu I don't really like this <laughs> overall blender 4.0 is looking fantastic i highly recommend that you give it a download uh on a separate note i just came back from the blender conference all right let's watch this quick five minute video going over the features that's in five minutes uh and then we'll go back into trying to texture paint or do what's up everybody we have the new blender oh my god what's oh, this guy I, I know this guy so then shoddy I watched one of his videos before. Oh, why do you have to scare me like that? Okay, anyway, let's reduce the volume. 4.0 update, so we're going oh, to that's why I recognize them. So that we can get through all these features in less than five minutes. No tools are an accessible way to expand Blender and customize tools without requiring Python. It allows you to use geometry node groups to create your own operators and your own modifiers. Simulation zones can now be baked individually in geometry nodes, and the simulation output node now has a new skip input as well. Just a reminder, my visual effects asset pack, which heavily relies on simulation nodes, is available on Blender Market now. We're currently working on a free update, and we just launched an essentials pack, which is a cheaper option. AGX View Transform introduces a better color handling system, especially in overexposed areas. This is an extremely exciting update. And of course, my favorite feature, which I have covered in previous videos, is light linking. A standard feature in many other software pipelines has finally made it to Blender. And with this feature, you can set light groups and then include exclude objects from lighting and shadows. Now all light sources have a UV available and the image texture node, both the point light and the spotlight have been changed to function as a double-sided sphere light. And the sunlight offers consistent intensity irrespective of its angular diameter. And the area lights have also been received a corrected conversion factor. So overall, you should see an improvement in lighting. And with the viewport compositor, it now supports movie distortion, sunbeams, keying, in paint, double edge mask. Blender even has a new render engine in 4.0, the Hydra Storm render engine, which is a real time renderer that is part of the USD workflow. Now the principal BSDF node has a huge version two update. You can see it looks radically different with collapsible menus. This includes things like the new sheen, which uses a microfiber shading model. This will give you more realistic fabric materials and can be used for things like dust on materials. The normal map has also been improved for its interpolation of the strength input, meaning that it is less likely to break and give you those ugly black glitches. Multiple scattering GGX has also been improved and no longer has a noise or performance disadvantage. And overall energy conservation has been improved leading to brighter, more realistic material rendering. Path guiding now works on glossy surfaces, leading to less noise in your renders and thus faster renders and cycles. A new principal hair BSDF mode is included and it has a more realistic look. It's less noisy, gives a nicer focus reflections, but it might increase render times. The noise texture nodes have also been improved with new inputs for fractal Perlin noise and the Veroni texture now supports fractal noise with new inputs as well. Now, if you're like me and use Rigify, you'll be excited to know that it's gotten a big update. It has redesigned interfaces for layer names, visibility panel toggle button layouts, and additional layer specifications. It's introduced a visual editor for modifying the layer visibility button layout. New built-in spline tentacle rig is also included based on the spline IK. Blender's been focusing a lot more on animation, and we have a new asset shell for the pose library, making it easier than ever to use. They've replaced yeah, the legacy yeah. armature layers and bone groups with bone collections, a new system which has bone colors that can now be specified individually with both edit and pose mode variations. Benny Bones has a new method for vertex mapping to B-bone segments that considers rest posed curvature. You can now move NLA strips to be vertically reordered. The graph editor saw a huge update. We have improved drawing for locked F-curves, multi-editing for F-curve modifiers. It looks insane. <laughs> we have a ton of other operators as well, including match slope, blend to ease, blend offset, shear key, scale average, graph editor handle selection, butterworth smoothing. But I'm most excited about the push and pull, which works like an amplify setting, and the time offset, which easily slides the graphs around. And we've seen significant improvements in the graph editor's performance, especially with dense key data. Great if you're doing things like motion capture. Volume deformation has improved on the armature modifier for rigging. The color picker is now capable of picking colors outside of Blender windows on the window system. There's a new filter that I can't pronounce. Whoa. 
I, I honestly, oh, that's, 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 okay, that's actually really cool. Now it's, it's that this wow. word right here, kind of a big change visually. The add modifier menu has been changed and now you can quickly search it as well. I'm a big fan of these oh, new actually, node panels. That the fact you could search it is actually quite nice. That is good. I just don't know how to feel about it kind of being a, like a little thing. You can use to create collapsible sections within our node to create more organized nodes when they're complex. You see it in extensive use in the version two principal node. Library override has had various fixes and improvements. 3DS, USDS, FDX, and Collada have all seen large amounts of improvements. The OBJ add-on has actually been removed and importing and exporting OBJ format is now native to Blender. Within the sequencer, you can now adjust the speed of clips interactively by dragging retiming keys and it also supports smoother transitions. A bunch of shortcuts have actually been changed in this update that you might want to check out especially if you do sculpting. I'm excited that they've added this incremental saving option, which we also have more statistic options within object mode. Selection for text objects has been improved. The default UI font has actually been changed this update. And as usual, there are hundreds of bug fixes, minor features, and improvements, which of course can be seen at the link in the description below. If you like what you see, go support Blender by joining the development fund. This is a cluster full of labs customers. All right. Some pretty interesting stuff. Some pretty cool stuff.
Oh, was I muted the entire time? Fuck. I don't even know how long I was muted for. And I was talking. I was making so many jokes. It was so funny as well. God damn it. <laughs> anyway. I was just about to say. I think I'm going to end it. Um, because I want to do some solo research. And so tomorrow, hopefully, I will find something a lot better, a method that I like, and we could actually start making some progress. Because at the moment, we're not making any progress. But yeah, I'll go ahead and do that then. This is an odd one. I didn't do much. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, have a good day. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye, you. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.